Hawks general manager Danny Ferry took an indefinite leave of absence from his team after racially insensitive remarks he made about Ding. My least favorite teammate, Danny Ferry. He seemed like the type of guy that's, that's your friend at practice but going home and calling you the N-word. I'm not the type of person that's going to hold on and be angry at somebody or be angry at Danny. I, I don't think Danny is racist. Daniel John Willard Ferry, born October 17, 1966. Today's feature is considered one of the biggest busts in NBA history. He's also considered one of Duke basketball's greatest players ever, which can be confusing how that level of didn't translate. You might remember Ferry for the unflattering and some call racist remarks he made about Luol Deng, relating he and people where he's from to scammers and deceivers of the worst kind. But most don't remember Danny Ferry's basketball story and how he went from being the best player in college basketball, the number two overall pick in the NBA draft, ahead of nine future NBA All-Stars and three Hall of Famers. Ferry's game was basically a stretch four before that style became popular, as even with high volume of attempts from deep, he knocked down elite level percentages like 95-96 where he shot four a game at 39%, or in 96-97 attempting three and a half a game at 40%. He shot a career-high 45% in 2000-2001, attempting to a game. This came after shooting amazing in college as well, since the three-point line was implemented after his freshman year. He shot 39% for his due career and 42% as a senior, attempting three a game. Each year at Duke, he improved on the offensive end, became more efficient, and at 6'10", was a decent rebounder on that level as well. The highlight of his college career is him scoring 58 points in a game in December 1988, which was and still is a Duke record for most points scored in a game. After four years in college, Ferry on paper looked like one of the best players entering the draft and a can't-miss prospect at the mature age of 23, having played for an elite program like Duke that was held at high standards at the time. He was taken second overall by the Los Angeles Clippers, but refused to play for the team, instead playing his first professional season in Italy before having his rights traded to the Cavaliers for two first round picks, a second, and Ron Harper, who had a much better career than Ferry, where in 13 years he averaged 10 or more points just twice in that span. 13 and 95-96, 10 the year after. Every other year, he's been a complete disappointment seeing where he was drafted, his decision not to play for the team that earned the right to select him, only to come back from his overseas rookie year to join a team that similarly never achieved its goal of being a title contender, making the playoffs six times in ten seasons with Ferry playing a reserve role for the most part. So what happened to make Danny Ferry one of the worst top two picks in NBA history? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Danny Ferry was a 6'10 power forward from Hyattsville, Maryland, where he became a star for DeMatha High School, becoming a two-time All-American and Parade Magazine Player of the Year, as well as National Player of the Year by his senior season. Ferry was highly recruited to say the least, but chose the Duke Blue Devils as his college choice. Duke was just starting to become the program we know them as today. Coach K was only five years in at that point as head coach and had missed the tournament three out of five times before Ferry arrived. By his second season, Danny Ferry was the best player on the roster. He led his team to the Final Four in 88 and 89, also making the Final Four as a freshman in a minor role. December 10, 88, he caught fire on Miami, scoring 58 points that hasn't been topped since. He left Duke top 10 in points, rebounds, and assists, the only player to accomplish that in school history. He was two-time ACC Athlete of the Year, as well as Player of the Year in 88 and 89. First team All-American as a senior, along with the Naismith Player of the Year. His number was retired by the end of his last season. He's known as a 50 greatest Duke player ever, as you can see why expectations for him were through the roof 
leading to a top two selection in the 89 draft. Stunt number one, an overseas beginning. After an outstanding Duke career and high draft pick, Ferry had the foundation in place to make his career whatever he wanted it to be, but he didn't want to compete. He privately voiced his thoughts on not wanting to sit on the bench behind the amount of players they already had at the power forward position and even small forward. They had just taken Danny Manning first overall a year before, who played the same position as Ferry. So, in a draft day shocker, he informed the team that he wanted no parts of having to compete against what they already had, even directly similar to Ferry's play. He decided to head overseas instead of showing up to LA and I think this laid the groundwork for a career that became as lackluster as any. Either way, he went to Italy and had a great year from Mesa Guerrero, known now as Virtus Roma, averaging 23 points and 6 rebounds a game during the 1989-90 season, leading the team to the playoffs. A lot can happen in a rookie's first year experiencing a new kind of basketball than he's used to at that point. Coming in at 23, then taking a year off, made Ferry 24 before even playing a game in the NBA after his rights were traded to the Cavaliers, whom he did join and play for. Building all that commotion, not wanting to play for the Clippers, then going overseas, built expectations for Ferry even more that when they finally got him at 8 points a game in 1991, everyone was shocked at his lack of development. Later, Brandon Jennings would do something similar by beginning his pro career overseas, then going to the NBA, and it didn't work. Overseas can change your game and confidence sometimes for the worse. His first five years, he didn't average at least 10 points a game even once. Stunt number two, lacking attributes. Another reason Ferry didn't consistently find success in my opinion was because he lacked important attributes he was expected to have based on his success prior to the league. The Cavaliers saw him as a great rim protector or at least adequate, but Ferry was anything but that. He never averaged more than 4.1 rebounds a game for his career, along with as a rim protector, he was essentially just a body. One that was tough at times, even bordering dirty, but clearly lacking attributes that could make him a good to great player. On the NBA level, he was considered slow, lacking athleticism and speed on both ends, as no, he wasn't the player Cleveland thought they were getting. He was a below average rebounder and shot blocker in the league, never averaging at least one block a game for his entire career. Yes, he could shoot, he even knocked down his free throws, but he lacked too many skills and attributes that make a good to great big man in the NBA, mainly rebounding, shot blocking, and defensive IQ, especially as a second overall pick. Stunt number three, way before his time. And lastly, Danny Ferry was simply way before his time, as the stretch four position that he arguably created had yet to be a style the NBA were ready to invite. Traditional big men were still in style, and future dominant back-to-the-basket players were waiting to get their chance in the spotlight. In today's game, Ferry would fit perfectly. He's always been a very efficient deep shooter that would have caught many off guard in today's game with how big he is, but also how lethal he can be from distance. Imagine his skill set on the Golden State roster. Even a guy like LeBron with his passing ability and fairy shooting could have benefited Danny a bit more to have been in the NBA in a different era. Of course, that's impossible, and so we're stuck with the career Ferry had that wasn't too suited for the era he played in. A little to no deep shooting from bigs, all back to the basket, and all bad for Ferry. All in all, Danny Ferry was a bust, and will go down as one of the worst ever. He won a chip with the Spurs in 2003, although he played 9 minutes and averaged 2 points a game. He retired after the season and became a front office executive, one caught on tape in 2014 making racist remarks about Luol Deng. He was dismissed as GM and forced to take a leave of absence over the remarks and hasn't been a GM since. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, Danny Ferry's growth was stunted. Chiboy JC stunted growth, and I'm out.